Multiplayer AR, group FaceTime, shortcuts, automatic workout detections, and dark mode. We're cutting through all the fat and getting to the good stuff from WWDC right here on the Apple Core. Now let's be honest. This was not the most exciting developers conference, at least in terms of announcements. We had no new hardware and no major redesigns to their operating systems. However, Apple did deliver on some requests from both users and developers, starting with iOS 12. Now this was an important update because it focused on performance improvements, something much needed after iOS 11, but it's obviously to be expected. What's important here is that it doesn't discriminate against older devices. According to Apple, iOS 12 will come to all the devices that had iOS 11 updates and will make them faster and with less bugs. Now that's TBD, but it's a step in the right direction in Apple acknowledging that it made a mistake by making our older devices slower. Another boring but important update is screen time controls. Now breaking news, we're spending way too much time on screens and on our phones. This from the phone manufacturers that made us addicted to phones in the first place, but that's besides the point. With iOS 12, you will be able to set app limits and be able to see a rundown of how you're spending your time, which may be horrifying for a lot of us. And though we may be too far gone now, it's not all lost for our kids because parents will also get the same controls to monitor and set time limits for their kids. Wait, wait, wait a second. First, they give us the tools to make us less addicted to our phones, and then they give us me emojis. Those are an emojis of yourself now featuring tongue tracking. That's a thing. Now, this is kind of like what Samsung tried to do with their avatars, but they made it look a lot less creepy than Samsung. You can now use them in messages and FaceTime, and I can't believe I'm reporting on this. But the more exciting news about FaceTime is group video calling of up to 32 people. Now, I don't need to talk to 32 people at a time, and it looks kind of messy on the phone, but four people, that would be great. And one of the more impressive iOS 12 updates was ARKit 2 with a rumored multiplayer support. Now, this is great for getting your butt kicked by Scott Stein at this slingshot game, but it's also great at being able to render the same graphics on multiple devices at the same time. It also includes 3D object detection, which is able to meld real life and virtual life like they did in this awesome LEGO demo. And a new file format to share it all in making AR more accessible to the masses. But what this all boils down to is Apple paving the road for the hardware to come. The next big one was Mac OS, Mojave. Apple kept it in California for this year's theme, but moved it to the desert. And now the coolest feature, at least according to developers, was dark mode. But the feature that may have the biggest impact if you're a Safari user has to do with privacy. Apple has enhanced their intelligent tracking prevention. Now, that means that they're blocking any kind of widget with a share, like, or comment button that may be tracking your information without your permission. Watch OS 5 also got some pretty major updates. My personal favorites were all the new fitness features most importantly, the automatic workout detection. This means you won't have to bother logging anything on the Apple Watch anymore because it will know when you start and stop a workout. Runners also got some cool features like a gentle nudge when you're going above or below your target pace and it now tracks hiking and yoga. Other important features include actionable notifications, limited web browsing, Siri shortcuts, I swear we're getting to that, a walkie-talkie app, which is pretty self-explanatory, and the podcast app. So that's great, but the bigger news here is that it now supports audio for third-party apps like Pandora and even Spotify if they're game. But what about Siri? Siri did not get any smarter, but that doesn't mean Siri's not open to learning. With a new app called Shortcuts, users will be able to program commands for Siri to work with third-party apps. Now that may not be enough to satisfy a lot of users like myself, but it's really not about me here. This conference was about the developers and we want to see what got them excited. I'm really excited about the, the Siri shortcuts. I think as a developer, I see that it was really useful. 
Um, we want to make it, for, for patients using our app, we want to make it as easy as possible to be able to do things on our app, and I think Siri is a great way to do that. But also as a, as a user, I can see real ways that I would actually use that functionality myself. I, mean, I actually am kind of excited about dark mode for, um, for Mojave, so I'll be excited when the production version of that comes out. Yeah, I'm really excited about like multiplayer um, like, capabilities, so like, you can have uh, like two people seeing the same thing at the same time, at the same place. So that kid you just saw, he's 11 years old, already has eight apps on the App Store, and is officially making us all look bad. So that's it for today, but in the meantime, you can give us some love, give us a like and subscribe, or you can tweet me with some of your favorite features from this year's Developers Conference, and we'll be back next week with more on the Apple Core.